Salutations. I thought we'd go over the hyperdimensional resonator a little bit more about it, a little more in depth. Uh, unfortunately, my unit is not working now. Suddenly, the electromagnet stopped working. Although the toggle switch is going, it's not vibrating anymore. So that's another problem, apparently, with Mr. Gibbs' hyperdimensional resonator that he claims is used for time travel. Physical and astral time jumps. Um, we'll talk a little bit about the journal that he gave and instructions to actually use this for a physical time jump. What you're supposed to do is use uh, find um, a vortex on your property, which basically is a place where your cell phone isn't holding a signal. All right. At that point, you plug this in. You put something in the witness well here, which normally can be crystals or a meteor, like I would use meteors sometimes. This is from Africa here. Um, then at that point, you start rubbing this on the rubbing plates and tuning it until it stops. You're rubbing, you, start, you stop rubbing, it gets a stick. Okay, at that point, uh, you're supposed to be able to make a time jump. Now, if I was able to get this working, I have a watch here that I would be able to put at each pole of this electromagnet, okay? And uh, it would start going forward a whole lot on this pole back here, it would start going backwards. So fast that it was much more than a natural interference that this watch would get from electromagnet, all right? So in that way, we'll go ahead and go over what is inside of this device, all right? And we'll take it apart as we just uh, have it here now. Oh, one other thing. When you're using this for a time jump, you're also supposed to put on this headband here which goes into the side of the unit, along with the electromag electromagnet here. They're called time coils, is what he calls these. You put it on, and it's made out of electro, I think guitar strings, which are not as conductive for electricity. Another reason you might, might not fry your balls when you put this thing on, which is something that concerned me. Um, next would be, all right, we'll go over the inside of this, all right? This is the ACR unit again, all right? Inside, this is what we have. Oh, this is okay. These are the toggle switches here. You can see the LED light coming on for the witness well. This is the witness well here. These are the toggle switches. This is the rubbing plate. Inside, this is what we have. It's actually a very simplistic radionics device. This is a free energy radionics device. All right. Inside, here we have for the toggle, for the uh, tuning knobs here, we have the toggle switches. We have the witness well, which appears to be <laughs> a canister for developing uh, camera film, all right, uh, photographers. Over here, okay, we have, uh, inside we have the diodes here, and then we have the capacitor. So you can see it's very simple. But the main part of this that I wanna emphasize is the copper coil that you see coming out of here and wrapping around beneath the rubbing plates. That's called the caduceus coil, all right? The caduceus coil is what actually interferes with the timeline, the time field, and makes the watch do what it does. So the caduceus coil is a primary part of the technology for Stephen Gibbs' amazing time traveling machine here. It does not do, when I used it, I used it according to all of his instructions, um, even after he called me a soulless alien hybrid, but we'll talk about that another time. Anyway, uh, what I did notice is that it would not give physical time jumps, but I did have something very odd happen, like a few missing things, like I had some sushi and it disappeared on me. No one in my house, I was alone, ate it or anything, and I was looking forward to it. It disappeared after I used this, and I can't explain it. So that implies there could have been a slight time skip of some time, some, some kind. All right, I will admit that. But what I have noticed, that it's much more effective as a telepathic device. If you're trying to telepathic, telepathically reach someone, this device is much more suited for that. <coughs> Although he does not say that. So that's just my take on the hyperdimensional resonator. Take it or live it, it's food for thought only. Do your own research on it. I wouldn't advise getting ones, but that's just my opinion. God bless, thank you very much.